Once again, we're working against the clock today. We've got a lot to accomplish before we're supposed to get some really heavy rains from the tropical storm that's been down in the southern United States makes its way up here later today. So we have things to do, mostly at the farm this morning. So we're gonna be taking you with us. We've got to move some baby rabbits into rabbit tractors and Hope has been really struggling with flies. So I'm gonna bring out my natural remedy today, share with you guys my recipe for fly spray that is all natural. Before we head to the farm, let's make the fly spray here so that I don't have to take all of the ingredients there with us. I'm gonna be making kind of a large batch of the fly spray so that I have quite a bit of it at the farm so I don't need to worry about running out. It's really simple and uses mostly common ingredients that you have in your house. There are some essential oils involved which you might not have, but you can just get a couple of the small bottles of them and it will last a long time. Now I just heard some really sad rooster crows. Remember a few months ago, <laughs> a few months ago we incubated a bunch of eggs and we did an experiment where we only chose eggs that were really round and weren't pointy on the bottom. Apparently there's an old wives tale that says the pointy eggs are rooster eggs and the round eggs are hen eggs. We wanted mostly hens, so we took from my friend, Delyn, we took mostly round eggs and we incubated them. They have hatched and now the chicks are getting old enough that we can tell the difference between hen and rooster. The results are, we think we have about seven or eight roosters and 10 or 11 hens. So it didn't quite work out, but I am happy to have more hens than roosters. The roosters will keep one or two and then the rest of them will be dinner at some point. So if you hear, so if you hear some really sad rooster crows in the background, those are the young roosters. And then you'll hear our resident roosters crowing, competing with them in the background. So let's get started on the fly spray. This is not a unique recipe to me. I actually le learned this from the channel Art and Brie. They did this video, I don't know, a few years ago, and it is really working for us. So let's get started. I'm gonna be mixing it all in an empty uh, one gallon vinegar bottle. Starts out with four cups of water. We're going to also add four cups of apple cider vinegar. It doesn't have to be special vinegar. And because we're using such a large volume of it, I prefer not to use raw vinegar because it's so expensive. And in this situation, it's really not gonna make a difference one way or the other. So four cups of apple cider vinegar. Now we're gonna add four tablespoons of some kind of vegetable oil. It really doesn't matter what kind. I only have avocado oil or olive oil right now, so I chose avocado oil just because in general I think it's thinner and maybe it'll work better. So four tablespoons. Now in order to have oils combine well with the vinegar and the water, we need to add some soap. And that will emulsify everything when we gently shake it up and allow everything to disperse equally within our spray. So four tablespoons of um, dish soap. It doesn't really matter what kind you use. Uh, we are just do using seventh generation because it's more natural for us. So four tablespoons. Okay. 
Okay, next we're gonna move on to the essential oils. There are four that I'm gonna be using today. They are tea tree oil, lemongrass, cedar wood, and citronella. We're going to be putting 40 drops of each one of these in this spray. Now this recipe can be easily cut in half, cut in you know quarters. You don't need to make such a big batch, but you can, and you can make more. So right now we're doing 40 drops of each of the essential oils. just how easy it is and it really is effective. So I'm just gonna put the cap on and just give it a gentle shake to combine them. Now that will separate over time and before we put it into our spray bottle and before we use it, we'll need to mix it up again. But that is ready to go down and we can give Hope some relief from all those darn flies. First thing we need to do this morning is get in and do all of our daily chores with our breeder rabbits. Now on our way in, we took a look at Hope. It doesn't look like the flies are too bad yet this morning, maybe because it's still a little cool out. So we're gonna take care of the rabbits first, and then we're gonna go try out that fly spray on Hope and give her some relief from those flies. They seem to get so bad in the afternoon when the weather warms up. So let's head in and take a look at the rabbits. When we wake, and see the sun Side by side our fears are done All the good times just begun Um, we know what we have Let's hold on tight Found what we're looking for in life Call us crazy But things are finally right you and I, the future is bright oh, You and I, we got it oh, We don't need no more oh, Even in the hard times You and I can weather any storm Well, everybody looks great this morning. Now this area has really worked out well for us, especially with the hot weather. It's nice and shady in here and there's a nice cool breeze that comes through these openings up top and just pushes out the hot air. It's been nice and cool. Even when it's been in the 90s, it's been nice and cool in here. We have installed a fan at the back that will push the air all the way through this area and keep these guys nice and cool. One of our breeder does had babies overnight. I took a look at them. They're looking really great. They're just, you know, they've been born within the last 12 hours. She had nine babies, nine kits, and they are doing well. Uh, we have another doe that is due to have her babies, hopefully tonight. Our other silver fox mom, she had her babies about five weeks ago. There are four of them in here with her. Today is the day that we check and see for sure if we have males or female kits. And today is the day that they get weaned and put down in a rabbit tractor on the ground. We have some repairs to do on the rabbit tractors before we take these guys out. So let's head outside and take care of those things. Before we get ready to move those babies out, we do have to fix one of our rabbit tractors. What I'm actually gonna be doing today is adding a divider to it so that, they, so that they have more of a secluded area within the rabbit tractor. I've already done this on a lot of our other ones, but so far this one is just wide open inside. Over the years, we've tried a lot of different styles of rabbit tractors. This is the style that we've settled on. This size seems to be about perfect, and this uh, overall style seems to work really well for us. We've tried the A-frames, we've tried 
everything else, but this is what works best for us. I do have a video about how to build these. If you want to check that out, go ahead and do that. Now these are th uh, three feet wide, six feet long, and two feet tall, which is perfect for one litter of rabbits. So today what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some supports right here where this metal ends, and then we're going to add a board across so that this whole area here uh, is a little more protected for them. The reason we like to do that is for two reasons. Uh, first of all, for weather protection. When it starts to rain heavier, they can get inside of there. It's a fully enclosed area. It gives them more protection from uh, weather. So whether that be snow or rain or ice or just heavy wind, they can get away. And then it also gives them an area to escape to if predators come around. Even though we have a really heavy wire on here that's pretty small, uh, there are some predators like raccoons that could reach through here. But once we put this divider in there, the rabbits have a safe area to get inside of and there's no way for the raccoons to get in there. Now the other thing that I still need to do to this tractor is to add a solid back. Right now we just have the back like this for more airflow, which is great during the warm weather, uh, but it does leave them a little more susceptible to predators. So uh, sometime soon I'll be coming and putting uh, a solid back on this one as well so they have a completely enclosed area there. But I'm not going to do that today. For today we're just going to put the divider on the inside. That will give them a place where they can feel safer and it'll keep them out of a little more of the weather. bring that litter out from the breeding area and put them in this tractor here but we've also brought out a second tractor because we have this litter of rabbits over here that are now getting old enough that they're about breeding age not quite but soon they will be so we're going to actually sex those and make sure we separate the males from the females so that they're not breeding with each other since they're all litter mates so we're going to move the males over here leave the females where they are and then we'll know what we have to be able to sell. All right, we're gonna get these four babies. I'm gonna put them in just a temporary cage so we can carry them outside, and then we'll find out if they're boys or girls once we get outside. Now these are too young right now to all breed together, so they can go into the same rabbit tractor even though they're litter mates. And these are old enough now, they're weaned, so they're old enough to be able to be sold. So we'll be able to sell these before they get to the age where they can breed with each other. All right, Mama, you get your whole cage back to yourself now. Let's get these guys outside so they can start eating some grass and enjoying some extra space. Now, there's a couple things I want to talk with you about regarding weaning rabbits and then weaning them and putting them on grass. The first thing is, while they're in with their mom and the mom is eating rabbit pellets or you know rabbit feed they're also already eating rabbit feed so they have been eating on and trying those rabbit pellets for weeks and weeks because 
they see mom eating those. So it's not like they've never had pellets before. Also, we make sure that these rabbits, the babies and the moms, get fresh grass in the cages before we wean the babies and put them on the ground. It's actually really dangerous to take a rabbit who's never had fresh greens, fresh grass, and put them right from a cage down onto the ground. Their digestive system just isn't used to that. It's not ready for it. So we make sure that before we wean our, our baby rabbits that we're giving them a lot of fresh grass and a lot of fresh greens before putting them down on the ground. So these guys are completely ready to be weaned from mom and to be put down in a rabbit tractor. So we need to get these guys out, determine if they're a male or a female, and then we can put them in the tractors. Okay, so it's time to put this new batch in their rabbit tractor, and we're going to see if they are males or females. Now, it is kind of hard to show on a video exactly what you're looking for, but we did a really great close-up video shot about how to tell the difference between a male and a female uh, in a previous video. So I'll make sure to link to that here uh, because it's it's hard to do in this situation, but we had really great video of it in that other video. We're gonna go ahead and flip them over on their back to expose their belly. I'm just going to press down to um, expose their genitals. And really, the opening shape is either a line up and down or kind of a slit or a little tiny pinhead circle. The, the line up and down or slit, that's a female, and the pinhole or just circular opening is a male. This multicolored one I think is a boy. Let's do the other brown one. The little brown one is a female. On to the gray. The gray is actually called blue in Silver Fox. I also think that's a girl. And this gray bunny is a male. So we have two males and two females. Now at this age, it's still sometimes kind of tricky, even when you know what you're doing, to tell 100% if they're males or females. Another couple weeks and you'll be able to tell for sure, no doubt. Uh, so we'll probably sex these again in a little bit, in a few weeks, and just make sure that we were right. But right now, that's what it looks like. Two males, two females. Now it's time for us to go look at the older litter to separate the males and the females. These guys are about 10 weeks old, so it should be no problem determining whether or not they are a boy or girl. So we're gonna take a look and separate the males away from the females. That is definitely a boy. That's a girl. So far, two boys and two girls. We originally sexed them when they were little and we sexed three girls and two boys. So now basically we're just double checking. And that's a girl. So yep, three girls, two boys. So the girls are gonna go over to the new tractor. Now that we're all settled in with the rabbits and everybody is safe, it's time to go put some of that fly spray on Hope, give her some relief from all of these flies that are here and give her a good brushing. She loves to be brushed. She's just like a big baby. She kind of follows you around and wants to be brushed. So let's go do that, put the fly spray on her and make her a happy cow. Well, Kevin is Hope's favorite person, and I, I guess I'm second on the list, but there, there's a trick to having her allow me to spray her. She doesn't really like to be sprayed. But if I brush her first, and then brush her and spray her a little bit, then she'll let me spray her. Let's see if she'll come over. Come on, Hope. Come on. You want me to brush you? Come on. Are you itchy from the flies? Oh, I know those flies. You want me to brush you? They love to be brushed. See, I can kind of trick her a little bit. 
<laughs> See, she wants to go away because she doesn't really like to be sprayed. I know, I'm brushing you. I'm brushing you. Look away so I can spray you. She's a funny girl. Don't look. Pay no attention to what the lady with the squirt bottle is doing. Well, that's good for 12 hours or so. This spray has been helping her for about 12 to 24 hours. Even though it's not a super long-term uh, spray effect for her, at least it's not giving her a bunch of chemicals. I'm happy that for right now we can use something natural on her. We sure are glad we got all of that done before the rain comes. The rabbits are happy. They start to eat some grass and they're just gonna have a good life out there in those tractors until they can go to their new homes. We're having new babies, how exciting about that. And Hope is finally getting some relief from the flies. We appreciate you guys spending time with us today. We love it when you join us. If you are loving what you're seeing, make sure to hit the subscribe button below so that you're notified of when we have new videos come out. The best way that you can help us here on the homestead is to share our videos with all of the like-minded people in your lives on your social media. And until next time, thanks for stopping by the homestead. Take care and God bless. God bless.